Hello and thank you for watching. In the last video we discussed the natural habits and behaviours of uh, the ancestors of Alfatsi or pet mice, uh, Mus musculus. In that video we discussed um, about the need of rodents to gnaw, to have places to hide and build nests. In the next video we then discussed um, their social needs. Today I actually want to talk about their nutritional requirements and what should we be feeding them. There have been literally thousands of studies on the nutritional intake of mice. However, these experiments are often aimed at exploring um, metabolic rates or the effects of a high calorific diet on certain organs. And so they're, they're often not aimed at um, keeping mice in the best health, but using them as a model for human uh, development, behaviour and health. Although often not aimed at exploring the ideal diet, therefore, for, for the mouse, the amount of papers that have been written can be used to estimate the um, needed range of certain nutrients. Now, I will add that there are some interesting exceptions. For example, um, during pregnancy and lactation, uh, it, is, it is necessary to increase the amount of uh, food and nutrition that our mice uh, receive because they have uh, obviously increased energy demands. So let's start relatively simple. Mice need access to fresh, clean water. Uh, this is often supplied via a water bottle. And uh, water bottles will supply water when mice lick at a metal ball. And in doing so, they push the ball into the spout of the water bottle, allowing a drop of water to come out around that ball, and then being able to lick that drop of water off the ball before it uh, falls onto the floor. There are some common problems with this method, um, being that these bottles do have a tendency to leak. More problematic, uh, however, is the concern that this method limits the amount of water that's actually available for your mouse. So there has to be a lot more effort in trying to obtain just a single drop of water. And if, say, you wanted to have four or five of them, it's a lot of effort and time that you have to spend licking. So the other option is going to be a water bowl and that allows mice to drink more naturally and freely. Again, however, there are issues with this method. Mice naturally will fill any open water with substrate, especially if you have any um, young or babies in the cage. So I counter this by placing the um, water bowl on a shelf with no substrate, or you can use a hanging bowl attached to the front of the cage, um, just raised off the floor. This tends to work very effectively and all my mice seem to actually prefer this method. It should be noted that although water bottles obviously do need to be cleaned and filled, bowls do tend to require more maintenance um, because mice can put substrate in the bowls. Um, they also quite like to add foods to the bowls um, or go to the bathroom in the water itself. So it does mean that it's very important not just to top them up, but to ensure that they are clean. Each mouse will normally require four mils of water each day. During hot periods, that can raise up to seven. And in females with litters, that can increase to over 14 millilitres per day per mouse. So although this sounds like a, a small amount, it is important that mice have a constant access to clean water so that they can meet that biological need. With that covered, I want to discuss the um, dietary needs of pet mice. In general, wild mice eat a lot of seeds, nuts and grains, as well as other plant matter and even insects. So I want to start by considering the concentrations of these macronutrients. So let's start off with fats and lipids. They're going to be needed for things like the absorption of fat soluble vitamins and also to build up their own fat stores. We know that different strains of mice cope very differently with changes in protein concentration. But as a general guide, around 5% uh, protein is needed and more than 15% protein in a mice diet can actually be disadvantageous. Now, carbohydrate wise, uh, mice diets are generally high in carbohydrates and that mimics the natural diets because seeds are naturally high in carbs. But there are different types of carbohydrates. So it's important to think about the difference between monosaccharides, which are linked to fatty liver disease, versus disaccharides, uh, which are, are generally found to have less negative um, influences. So with that in mind, we need to be offering our mice uh, a diet that contains over 40% carbohydrates, 
but you want to be ensuring that the uh, source of these are complex carbs and not simple carbs such as refined sugar. Then moving on to calcium and phosphorus, uh, they're both needed um, and involved in the formation and maintenance of bones, um, both in mice and humans. In mice, it's been found that high levels of phosphorus uh, is actually associated with reduced bone calcification, so poorer growth and lower uh, weight. So the appropriate values that we'd be looking for would be uh, approximately 5 grams of calcium per kilogram of um, diet food um, and 3 grams of phosphorus per kilogram of diet. Uh, magnesium deficiencies, especially during lactation, have been associated with sudden death uh, in pet mice and, and in laboratory mice. And that's normally found when magnesium is lower than 300 milligrams per kilogram of the diet. It, it is also interesting to note that the requirement for magnesium increases um, over not only pregnancy but during lactation and it can be as high as 700 milligrams per kilogram of food. But it's also been found that you can go up to like 2,500 milligrams without negative side effects. Um, so there's a little bit more freedom um, with that involved. With potassium, you're looking at two milligrams per kilogram, and that's been shown to support growth. Um, however, levels of up to 8.7 haven't shown any negative consequences. So again, that's another thing that you've got a little bit of a range for. The need for sodium and chloride in mice is relatively low. Um, and although that's not been well researched, it's estimated that it's as low as half a gram of sodium per kilogram of diet, uh, and the same for chloride. Moving on to your smaller vitamins and minerals, um, we've also got copper, which is uh, estimated at six milligrams per kilogram, but we know during lactation that needs to increase to eight milligrams. For iron, uh, mice actually need 35 milligrams per kilogram, but for reproduction, um, so both pregnancy and lactation, that can increase all the way up to 120 milligrams per kilogram, so they do need a good source of iron. Manganese is around 10 milligrams per kilogram. Um, zinc uh, in adult mice, you need approximately 10 milligrams per kilogram. But again, for pregnant and um, lactating females, that would increase to 30. We know that an adult mouse will eat approximately 3.5 grams of food per day. And with the requirements above, we can consider um, good sources of food. So many mice diets are given in a muesli style. Um, however, the concerns that I have with this style and that um, labs often uh, encounter is that mice will selectively choose um, and selectively eat their favourite. Mice, just like us, can have a bit of a sweet tooth and uh, have preferences and that selective feeding in a muesli style could in turn lead to um, deficiencies in the kind of nutrients that they're actually taking in. So for that reason, uh, myself and many others prefer a nugget style food. And that basically means that all of those nutrients are blended together and then formulated into sort of a, a nugget or a pellet style. And that is then offered to the mouse. Now, there are a couple that um, tend to come up quite regularly. These are things like Science Select, uh, Burgess or Mr Johnson's in terms of uh, the companies. With the knowledge that we now have, we can begin to uh, consider the appropriateness of those mouse diets that, that are widely used. So um, if you consider uh, Supreme Science Select, and that would be complete rat and mouse food, I believe, um, and Mr Johnson's, they are both readily available where I am. However, it should be noted that rats and mice are very different um, and for that reason I tend to just automatically stay away from the options that suggest that they're for both. My preferred brand is usually Burgess and although this also states it caters for hamsters and gerbils, hamsters and gerbils um, share more in common with the dietary necessities of mice than what mice and rats do, even though genetically mice and rats are actually uh, closer uh, in evolutionary terms. 
Burgess as a maintenance diet, it works really well for me. However, when I am breeding um, females, I tend to offer not only more food, but also try and vary the variety. So including things like mealworms, um, which you can either buy them dried or um, brought live, depending on your, your preferences, and that's going to help increase protein um, and keratin and some of those um, and some of the minerals and vitamins, especially if you gut load them first. Um, but you could also think about um, increasing the amount of fresh greens that you're offering. Um, so this is something all my mice enjoy um, and are often offered as treats. Uh, so things like spinach seem to be um, generally well liked by all, but also sunflower seeds. They're going to be great for training because they're small and can be taken uh, singularly or you can scatter feed them. So when offering new um, foods, make sure that it is only a small amount so as not to upset their digestive systems and do make sure that it's safe for them. So for example, apple is safe, but not apple seeds. So if you're gonna offer your mice some apple, make sure that it, you've caught it basically, that there's no seeds there. So with all that said, I do hope you've all enjoyed this video um, and that it helps um, you understand what we're looking for and why certain foods are better than others. Uh, have fun and let me know what your preferred brands are. Thank you.